Okay. I'm very excited for this next video. Or it might actually be a series of videos. It might be two. Because uh, we're going to focus on dynamic lighting. I think one video is going to be showing how to set up dynamic lighting and things involved there. And then the next video is going to show how to set up the light. Because there are so many different ways you can set up the light for dynamic lighting. Anything from just a torch to a flashlight to a hooded lantern to bonfires uh, to special abilities like dark sight or, or enhanced vision. Uh, there's just a number of things you can do. And uh, I, I, I'd, I'd like to show as much of them as I can. Uh, we're going to start, however, with how to set up dynamic lighting. So, the first thing you need to do is go to the page that you want the dynamic lighting on and go to page settings. And you're going to see a number of things down here in dynamic lighting. First of all, you want it enabled. Without it enabled, nothing else even matters. The rest are all optional, but I highly suggest always having the first three, and then this fourth one is kind of situational. I think you want to enforce line of sight, uh, and it says player's line of sight is set by the tokens that they control. Uh, this is really important if you're playing virtually. When everybody has control of their own player token, they can literally only see the things that their players can see, and not the things other players can see. So I always have that checked. Only update on drop will make things work a little better because it's only going to update the uh, the dynamic lighting once they unclick the token. So if they click on it to move it and then release the click, that's when it updates and shows what they can now see. Otherwise, if you have it unchecked, they could move their token all around and it's, it's more dynamic. Uh, but I, I don't... I don't like it that way. I think it's better to to make to have the tokens have to move one square at a time if they want to slowly reveal the map. And restrict movement I really like because it'll prevent people from putting their tokens into dark areas, areas of darkness. Uh, and I'll demonstrate some of this a little later. And then global illumination really just kind of, is it is it daylight out or is it night? Is it daylight out or are you underground? If there's no global source of illumination, such as, say, the sun, then leave this unchecked. With it checked, it's going to act as if there's a global source of sunlight outside of the map that is beaming down. So there'll always be a source of sunlight that you don't control, because it, it just exists. With it unchecked, the only sources of light that are going to be on the map are the sources that you put there, such as player characters with torches, or or campfires, or whatever. So once you have that all set up, you're going to close that page, and you want to make sure you're on the dynamic lighting layer. And that's where we're going to use this polygon and line tool. And you're going to want to select a color. Um, the, I, I leave the regular, the lot, the thickness at regular, and then you want to pick a color, something that's going to stand out. Uh, so for, and you're going to want two colors for the how, for how I do things. Um, so, say red for walls. Now there's a number of ways you could handle this. I like to go just inside the walls, so that when they're illuminated, players can see the walls. So you want to pick a starting point. We're going to start right here at the edge of this door. You're going to right click, go down to the edge of the wall, the corner of the wall here, click again, come down here to this corner, click again, go up here to the door, we're going to click again, and now we're going to left click, and that finalizes that line. So now we're going to come over here to this side of the door, left click, come up here to this corner, left click this corner left click this corner left click this corner left click but maybe a little bit further and then down here and then we're going to right click to finalize the line so now light is going to be blocked by this red line if there's a light source right here it would be blocked by these red lines so you just get a sliver 
if we go to the token layer, well, I don't have this set up for light yet, so we're not going to do that yet. Instead, we're going to we're going to put we're going to do these doors. What we're going to do for the doors is we're going to go, we're going to do yellow. So just click on the outside of the door, to the other side of the door, right click to finalize. Go from that red line to that red line and finalize. So now everything. These lines block out light. So now, say you as a GM, let's get to the select tool, make sure we're on dynamic lighting layer. You're running your adventure. The players, uh, the heroes come up and they're right here. And they want to know what's on the other side of the door, so they say we open up the door. So you go to the dynamic lighting layer, select the door make sure you have the four-way triangle and you just move it to the side and then bam suddenly they can see through the door you need to close it again you just move it back and that's that's it that's the extent of what you need for dynamic lighting you're just going to do that over the, the course of your entire map so if we go back to the red line so we want to keep doing this wall here We'll start there, come down here, then we just follow, this is a little more jagged, we just follow it as closely as, as we can. Doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, it's a cave, so it actually might work better to not be perfect. You just go around, however well you're comfortable, however you want to do it. Circle around. Get these straight lines here. I'm just going to kind of look through this. If I was actually working on this for an actual campaign, I might get a little more specific, but since this is really just a tutorial, I'm just going to kind of shoot through it here. Line, line, a little longer. Connect there, finalize. So that does that entire section. And then you do on and on, however you want to do the map. Now, if we go to the object and token layer, for the sake of this tutorial, oops, I put a little red dot on, there we go. I'm just going to set up the equivalent of a D&D &D torch. Um, I think they go 40 feet, start dimming at 20 feet, and have 360 degree angle. So that's what this means. The first number is how far out the light's going to go. And because we have these grids set to 5 squares, they're going to go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. So the circle's going to come out this far. But it's going to start dimming at 20 feet. That's the second number, so 10, 20. About here, everything's going to get a little dim, and it's not going to show everything beyond. And because it's 360 degrees, he's going to get it all around him. Now, all players will be able to see the light that this character emits. And uh, I don't because of the angle is 360 degrees, I don't think the has sight has a tremendous impact on this, but I, I click it anyway. So we're going to save those changes. And as you can see, even though this isn't the player version of the map, it still kind of shows you what he can see. And he cannot see into that room. Now we can actually go a step further to test this. Oh, and I have this set up under basic to be controlled by DM, which is us. If you don't, when you go to do what we're going to do next, you won't actually see the token. Go to settings, and you, if you click on rejoin as player, you're going to see the board as a player would see it. So this will really help you troubleshoot. So we have the token, and as you can see, we can see 
all around the room. And what we can't actually see through this wall or into the room. And we can't move into the room either. See how it blocks him from moving into the room? Now we'll rejoin as the GM. Scroll back down there, and if you move him in here, now because the of the doors, you'll see all he can see is what's in the room. And if you go to the dynamic lighting layer, select the door, move it aside, see how it opens up so he can see more now. If we go back to the object and token layer and move him around, you'll see that depending on where he is, depends on the angle of what he can see outside the door. We can just go back, seal that door up. And you can use this would be a good tool as a GM at this mode, so you can see like see how there's a crack there. So we know that the door wasn't done right. So now if we go back to the object and token, now he can't see. So there's no more sliver of light. And that is the basics for setting up dynamic lighting in your dungeon. It can seem daunting, but once you get going, it really moves very swiftly. I think the important thing is to have the two different colors, one for the walls and one for the doors, so that when you're running the game, you can quickly, at a glance, see, oh, door, door, and you can move them easily enough. Okay, in the next video, we're going to focus more on the token and the different types of lights that you can do from a token itself. I hope this was helpful. Thank you very much.